Hey everyone, Mayhem Prone here from Dimensionim, where today... When it comes to gaming, 2016 was a fantastic year for me. I decided to try a bunch of new games that I had never heard of before, and I ended up loving a bunch of them. And in honor of those wonderful experiences, these are the top 10 games I played in 2016. Before we start, here are some rules. I can only include games that I played between Christmas 2015 and Christmas 2016. This is because, like most people, I get most of my video games over the holiday season, so it would be unfair not to include them. There's one small exception. If there's a game that I played as a young child and completely forgot about but rediscovered this year, it can go on the list. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it! Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. With its extremely tight controls, very fun and diverse roster of characters, and nearly infinite hours of gameplay, this is definitely one of the best fighting games of all time. I doubt there's going to be many people out there who would deny that Smash Bros. is amazing, but the real question is, why is it only number 10? Well, as I just said, it's already universally praised, so it's a bit too obvious for me to put it very high on this list. And I've only had this game since September, while I've had Smash Brothers for the 3DS ever since its launch, so I've clocked much less time in this game. But even with all these drawbacks, the game is so fantastically fun that I knew that there was no way I could justify not putting it on this list. Pack Picks for the DS. Now those who know me would know that I really love the DS. In fact, it's my favorite console of all time. So I love just going down to my local Walmart and spending $5 on a budget DS game and trying it out. This is one of the few times that I've happened to come across a hidden gem. Pack Picks is a puzzle game where you draw and control Pac-Man by making various gestures on a touchscreen in order to eat ghosts. While the story and soundtrack aren't particularly good, the gameplay will get you very addicted. The game has lots of variation when it comes to enemies and level design, and it even has pretty decent boss fights. The controls are mostly done by drawing stuff on the touchpad, and surprisingly, it works really well. Excluding the arrow, the game easily picks up any of the gestures that you're supposed to draw. In fact, I can say that Packpix has some of the best touchscreen controls of any game in the DS library. Packpix isn't anything big, but the important thing is, it's not trying to be anything big. But for what it is, a Pac-Man puzzle game, it does its job really well, which is why it gets its spot on my list. Sonic CD for iOS. Now to understand this, we need a little bit of backstory. My first ever console that I got was a GameCube, and one of the first games I ever got for that GameCube was the Sonic Mega Collection. So ever since I was six years old, I played tons of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. But the thing is, with three lives and no continues, there was no way that I could ever beat any of those games. But when I heard that Sonic CD was coming to the iPhone with unlimited continues, I instantly got excited. The sense of speed in this game is amazing. Even in the underwater sections, you go so fast that the entire game is just really exhilarating. And oh my gosh, it's a classic Sonic game without a million bottomless pits. I can finally go super fast without falling into pits. Hooray! Having to control it on an iPhone is a bit jarring. The controls are a little wonky and it makes precise platforming pretty difficult. But other than that, if you're an experienced Sonic fan, you're going to have no problem at all playing this. The soundtrack is super memorable and the boss fights are really fun. I might even go so far as to say this is my favorite of the classic Sonic games, but that just may be because it's the only one I've been able to actually beat. Either way, I had a really good time playing this. Mario & Luigi Paper Jam Now, I've always been a big fan of the Mario & Luigi RPG series, and I can honestly say that this may be my favorite game out of them all. I do have to admit that out of every game in the series, this probably has the worst story, but the gameplay is just fantastic. A problem I've always had with the series is that boss fights were never fun because you'd constantly have to be reviving the other brother. The introduction of Paper Mario made it so that you can still fight while your other bros are healing, which makes the gameplay a lot faster and a lot more action-packed. And in addition, Paper Mario's use in exploration and the new Papercraft battles gives this game several new fun mechanics. 
And can I just say, the battle theme is amazing. Even after listening to it for over 30 hours, I'm still not tired of it. The story may be as dull as they come, but the gameplay is so good it more than makes up for it, which is why it makes it up on my list. Metroid Fusion. Now as you can expect, my very first outing into the Metroid franchise has left me eager for more. The amazing use of exploration and isolation in this game is something that I have never experienced before. The level design obviously had a lot of thought put into it, because I can't remember any times when two rooms looked the same. One of the standout aspects of this game were the character designs. The first time I saw that ex-parasite infected Samus suit, I nearly dropped my Game Boy in shock. This is just a testament to how amazing the atmosphere is. They took saying that, in other games, would just be a simple antagonist and turned it into an extremely intimidating supernatural force. The only reason this game isn't any higher on my list is the fact that I have not beaten it yet. A bit over halfway through the game, I got completely stuck. I even consulted online walkthroughs and I could not figure out how to progress. Even with that, I can't deny that this game is absolutely amazing and I will definitely be beating it very soon. Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. Now I'd have to say overall, the Mystery Dungeon series is probably my favorite video game series of all time, and this new entry doesn't disappoint that much. Just like any other game in the Mystery Dungeon series, the turn-based roguelike gameplay is extremely fun, I can't help but smile every time I play it. The side characters were memorable, the new locations were great, and some of the new mechanics were pretty fun to use. Like Metroid Fusion, this game was supposed to be much higher on this list. In fact, it originally held the number 2 spot, but then I realized something. Everything that this game does was done better by Mystery Dungeon's Explorers of Time slash Darkness slash the Sky. I'm serious, I've thought about this for months, and I can't think of a single thing that Super Mystery Dungeon did better than those games that came out almost 10 years earlier. Though even with all these shortcomings, Super Mystery Dungeons is still a Mystery Dungeons game, and is therefore amazing. It's just not as amazing as some of the other Mystery Dungeon games, which is why it only makes it to number 5 on my list. Oh, and by the way, I always played as a Totodile, and my partner was a Torchic. What about you guys? Tell me in the comments. Puzzle in Dragon's Z. Now in 2015 when this came out, I bought it and played the Mario version for about 20 hours. It was decently addictive, but the lack of any real plot made it really hard to get invested into, so I kind of forgot about it. In mid-2016, I dusted it off and decided to try out the other game on the cartridge, Puzzles in Dragon's Z. And as you can tell, I was really surprised. The Candy Crush-like gameplay is super addicting and can provide hours and hours of fun. The plot is simple, but charming, and the characters are generic, but really likable, which makes the entire adventure a joy to play. The soundtrack is unfortunately very small, but I like every track on it. The only glaring problem wrong with gameplay is the fact that the difficulty curve is very steep in some places. It's obvious that this game was made with a lot of love. At times, it feels kind of like a ripoff, but a ripoff made with the best intentions by a team who really cared about what they were doing, which really signs through. The only problem is, after 40 hours, I'm over 90% of the way through the game, and I can't beat freaking Enigma! Does anybody know how you beat Enigma? He is the most unfair boss I have ever fought in the game. Oh my gosh, he's tough. But other than that, the game is really good and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who wants a good puzzle game on the 3DS. Super Paper Mario. Now this is where the game I rediscovered accepts in comes in. When I was about 10 years old, I played this a ton and I remember liking it, so I decided to try it again and see how it holds up. Needless to say, it more than holds up, it excels even today. It combines the iconic platforming techniques from mainstream Mario games with the amazingly fun RPG mechanics from the first two Paper Mario games, which come together to create something truly special. 
Super Paper Mario is set apart from all other games due to its unique integration of RPG combat, platforming, and a sifting perspective, which is a mechanic that's almost exclusive to puzzle games. I can say without a doubt in my mind that this game, in my opinion, has the best plot of any Mario game that has ever been made. All of the new characters, except for O-Chunks, are really cool due to the fact that they all have interesting personalities and are based on really unique concepts. And most surprisingly, this game is really freaking dark. There are three points in this game where I was actually saking in my chair from genuine fear. I'm not gonna spoil them here, but if you've played Super Paper Mario, you know what I'm talking about. And there are also two major points in the game that are really freaking sad. This game had me all over the emotional spectrum. There are a few places where the level design is kind of boring, particularly the first world and the first three levels of the space world. But other than that, there are a lot of places where they use the mechanics to make the train really neat. I also have to commend the weird but really catchy soundtrack and the fantastic art design. I really like how everything looks in this game. The game admittedly has many flaws, but if you're willing to look past them, you will find a truly unique experience that nobody has ever been able to truly replicate, which is why it makes it into my top three. Kid Icarus Uprising Each level of this fantastic game consists of an on-rail shooting section and a third-person shooter section. Up to this point, I had never played an on-rail shooter before, so I thought it would be boring. But as you can tell, it's actually really fun! The gameplay is exhilarating, action-packed, and fast-paced. You're gonna be filled with adrenaline whenever you get into a tough level. And what really surprised me was how long the game is. When Nintendo isn't 100% sure in an idea, they usually make the game fairly short. But this game has a lot of levels. Even if you aren't super into the game and you play each level only once or twice, you're guaranteed to get at least 20 to 25 hours of fun out of this. In addition, all of the characters are really funny and extremely likable. Even after months since I last played the game, I can still remember every one of the main cast. In addition, the story is really good. It's a great blend of sci-fi and fantasy. At first, the story seems pretty simple and generic, but then it turns around and turns out to be a parody of many of the tropes that we see in big-budget action movies today. With a ton of twists and turns that always keep you wanting more, and a multitude of really clever fourth-wall jokes, this story will quickly get you invested and entertained. Admittedly, the control scheme is really weird, but once you get used to it, it's actually really fun to use. I went into this game completely blind. All I knew is that it starred Pit, and let's just say it was the biggest surprise I had all year. If you have a 3DS, I highly recommend picking it up as soon as possible. Shovel Knight is by far the closest thing I have ever seen to a perfect game. Every moment of platforming in this game is diverse, fun, and polished to a degree that is rarely ever seen in this industry. The average platformer like Mario will introduce a new gimmick every two or three levels, but Shovel Knight has so much content packed into it that each individual stage has at least two to three completely unique mechanics. All of this is wrapped up in an extremely interesting world with a simple but very endearing story. All of this is amplified by what is in my opinion the best video game soundtrack of all time. Jake Kaufman really went out of his way for this one. Do you know how much I love Shovel Knight? Well not only is it the best game I played in all of 2016, but it is now my favorite video game of all time. If you count all of the DLC campaigns, I have beaten Shovel Knight 22 times for a total playtime of almost 100 hours. Without hesitation, I recommend Shovel Knight for anybody who plays video games. But what great games did you play in 2016? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'm sorry that I've been away for so long, but now I'm back and better than ever. 
In order to make it up to all of you who have stuck with me for so long, you get to choose the topic of the next episode of Dimension M. For the next episode, I will review any game from this list except for these two. Please put your request down in the comment section and I will review whatever gets the most votes. I am really thrilled to be back so I can make some great new content for all of you. And until next time, I'm Mayhem Prone from Dimension M, and goodbye!